Hey guys, we're gonna bring one to you today about knee pads. You know, if if there's anything that saddle hunters do is we collect a lot of crap. I mean, saddles, ropes, carabiners. Oh my God, I could show you a stack of carabiners this big. Well, if there's anything I've got more than carabiners, it might be knee pads. So, uh, I mean, we've used uh, paintball knee pads. We've used Army Surplus Store knee pads, Trophy Line, Arctrix, uh, Alto, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Well, today we're going to discuss a new one that's on the market today. You know, I've hunted for a long time off the Arctic ones. I really, really like those. Um, saw no need to really change a lot until uh, this one came out just a really super, super good price point. Uh, it's the EWO Eastern Woods Outdoors. Just came out, just launched this. We're going to go over it a little bit in detail. And we're specifically going to, going to compare it today to Tethered's knee pads because, well, they're really really similar so uh we'll discuss all the ins and outs all the details all the specs of these right after this okay guys if you're fairly new to saddle hunting and i realize we've got more and more and more people there's this just huge influx of new saddle hunters coming into the sport using this as a method to uh just lighten their load a little bit hopefully Although, I've got a video on that that, you know, talks about not a lot of people who actually get into saddle hunting that actually achieve that. They still take too much crap into the woods with them. Uh, go look it up. It's uh, Can You Actually Hunt as a Saddle Hunter and Be a Mobile Hunter for Less Than 10 Pounds. Great video. But uh, there's a lot of people coming into this into this, uh, this arena, if you will, right, as newbies. And probably one of the first questions that a lot of people are going to go is, why the heck would you need knee pads to hunt, right? I mean, like... I get it. There's people at work, my coworkers. They need them to suck up to their boss, right? <laughs> but uh, as a hunter, to uh, to go in and, and sit around a, a tree, why well, do you need knee pads? Well, it, it's pretty simple, guys. In the traditional world of hang hanging hunts, run and gun, hang ons, you know your your old lone wolf alpha hang ons. Uh, Summit makes some great hunt, uh, hang ons. Uh, Novix, XOP, all those companies make great hang ons, right? And we have the tree behind us. Okay, the, the tree's right here, our knees are out in front of us, we're looking away from the tree, it's an open field of view, uh, there's there's nothing that's coming in contact with our knees, where we stand up, uh, we sit down, sorry I got out of the frame there, but uh, yeah, there, there's no need for knee pads. Well, saddle hunters, what we do is we put the tree in front of us, right, we're on the back side of the tree, there's all kinds of advantages to that, you use the tree as a blocker or a shield, you can hide behind it, you can move behind it as, as a deer comes and feeds around. I mean, classic example, two or three years ago, I was hunting a field edge. I actually had every intention of going and filling the freezer, taking a doe. Well, I, I had a couple young two-and-a-half-year-old bucks, an eight-pointer, maybe a small 10, and they're tickling antlers right in front of me. I mean, they're like seven yards away from me. I'm sitting on a field edge right behind a tree, field right in front of me, and they're sparring a little bit. And I'm watching this big doe work her way down toward me. And I'm just staying, I'm keeping the tree between me and the and the two deer, right? And and I'm watching this doe. Finally, she comes down. She gets a little broadside. I literally peeked out, shot her, went back in behind the tree, and the the two bucks are like, "What happened?" They had no idea, right? And being behind the tree, as a as a saddle hunter, I'd been sitting there resting my knees against the trunk of the tree. That's where knee pads come really in handy. Even if, if you're a leaner, right? I'm predominantly a leaner. I tell a lot of guys that. I I lean way back, but you get tired of leaning and eventually you'll just allow yourself to go into a tree. And typically you'll rest your knees against the tree trunk. Now you can do, you can get a pad. I'm looking around, I probably got a pad somewhere. Right? You can buy these. Any garden store, Lowe's, I think this one actually came from Menards. I've got a video on uh, making the mission trophy line mission platform a little bit better by incorporating one of these to get rid of the hump But a lot of guys will take these and strap it to a tree in front of you, right? Well, it's just one extra thing to carry It's a lot larger and bulkier, but th they are comfortable. That's an option. Okay, so But when you're you're leaning for a long time eventually you get tired just like in the traditional hang-ons I was talking about right you sit forever Well, eventually you get tired of sitting your butt gets sore or whatever. What do you do as this tree stand hunter? What do you do? You stand up on the platform, right? You stand for 20 minutes or so, you sit back down. You sit You sit for 20 minutes, you stand. You alternate back and forth. That's how you keep yourself going, how you get the blood, blood flowing. It's how you stay in a tree longer. Well, saddle hunters are no different. We lean and we sit. We sit against the tree for a while, and then you lean back up, okay? And that's where 
knee caps, knee pads will come really in handy for you. Okay, so hopefully that answers that question because you see it a lot of times on the boards. I've got it before, but like, why do I need knee pads? Well, that's why. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a bunch of them here. I've went through my fair share of knee pads. Uh, I started off, well, actually I think the first ones I ever bought were the Arctic ones, Arctic ones. They're like $70, $75, something like that. Okay, they're, they're pricey, they're spendy. Here's one of them right here. The, the challenge, and I, I love, I love their buckle attachment system. I love everything about their light. I used to wear them in, walking in and out all the time. Still do on occasion. Um, they're, they're great knee pads. I picked up a, a pair from Trophy Line that are really padded, really comfortable but they're a little bulky to wear in if you're going to walk in and walk out. They're great pads if you're going to put them in a backpack, get them on at the base of the tree, right? Uh, I tried, I mentioned outside the, the paintball ones. Actually, these are Army Surplus ones. These are Army Surplus ones. I got them at an Army Surplus store for six or seven bucks. Yeah, they were so-so. Uh, these are Arctic knockoffs. Uh, the first ones I showed you, these are the actual $70 ones. These were six or seven dollars. They're made for paintball. Uh, these were not any good. I did not recommend them uh, at all. Uh, I've tried the, the Alta ones. To be honest with you, I wasn't a huge fan. A lot of guys love them. And, and that's a great, great point. Knee pads are going to be like saddles. It's going to come down to personal preference. Some guys are going to love certain knee pads, while the same same knee pad will be hated by others. Okay. Um, but let's get back to the Arctic ones, because that's the ones that for the last several years, I wore these. Loved them, loved them, loved them. Now, they do tend to be a bit thin. There will be times that if I'm up against a tree, I will actually kind of collapse them a little bit. And I'll move it around and, and get a little bit more air underneath them so that they can compress a little, a little further because they, they tend to be thin a little bit. Well, so the tethered ones came out a couple years ago, and a lot of people said they were a knockoff knock off of the Arctic ones. They were a little bit thicker. Uh, just just a little bit maybe nicer if you will uh, I never bought them because I already had $70 Arctic ones and they were treat me just fine and really wasn't looking for a new knee pad and then EWO Eastern Woods Outdoors launched these last week I've, I've hunted every single night out of these for like eight or nine days in a row uh, so I've got got a good little bit of experience and feel that I can bring you on these and I really like them um, with a couple caveats I'm gonna explain those to you you know some people I get messages and some people call this the good, bad, and the ugly room because I give it to you straight. I don't hold back. I don't care. I'm not affiliated with any company, so I can tell you what I like about a product and what I don't like about a product. And I'll tell you a couple things I don't like about these, but there's a lot I do like about them. So um, let's compare them to what I've got a ton of, ton of, ton of experience to is the Arctic ones. They're a lot thicker. They're probably twice as thick. Uh, they're, they're a third as thick again over the Arctic ones. I really like that a lot. Um, basically the same kind of shape they'd be in that flex really super easy. Uh, the Arctic ones have a little bit of a rubbery feel right here that help you hold and grab on the mark, bark rather, as you're positioning yourself for a shot and you're leaning around the tree. That's really nice. The, uh, the EWO ones are kind of an e, uh, EVA plastic, I believe is what, what the guys called it. Um, it's got some textured grooving here, but it's uh, it's a little bit slicker than that. In fact, when we look back over at the tethered knee pads, and, and you'll see, guys, these are almost, I, I mean, they're cut exactly the same. I, I, I mean, it would not surprise me if these came from the exact same supplier. They're almost identical. The difference being, tethered has a rubber knee rubber cap sewn on the knee surface area here. It's actually physically sewn. You can see the thread around here. Whereas EWO's is one piece. And so I've already provided the, the feedback to the guys because Hunter uh, Osterhout, uh, Dano's son, actually put a post out in one of the groups and I was I was on it and uh, he said, hey, we want feedback. We want to know what you do like about the these kneecaps and what you don't like about them. Um, so I shot him that right quick. I'm like, hey, the, the tether ones have a, a little grippier feel to them. They actually grip the tree a little bit nicer. So I believe these guys in V2 are going to try to look at something like that, uh, which will be really nice. Now, the difference is, and I need to go back and double check. I will, I will put it down here on the bottom here. 
the tethered ones are like $68.99 or $70 bucks or something like that. I've seen people say that all the time. Uh, they're, they're somewhere in that neighborhood. And I'll, get, I'll drop you the exact price and put it in white right here at the bottom of this. Uh, whereas the EWO ones, I believe, are like $36.99 or something. I'll, again, I'll put the price right here below you. So um, half the price for almost the same knee pad, the difference being the grippy, rubbery feel, and this is kind of a more of a plasticky uh, EVA plastic all across there, but almost the same. The diff another difference here is um, Tether uses the same buckle system, clasp system, that the Arctrix ones had, whereas it's kind of like a uh, little house looking, we'll zoom in on this, it's, it's a kind of a little house looking slot that you bring the the corresponding clasp around to it and it just kind of clicks in like that okay that's the exact same kind and i grabbed the paintball one it, it again it's the same thing with artrix so again it's it's that little fits just like that uh, that's how tethers work as well the ewl ones are a buckle which a lot of people, I've already seen some people go, oh, I'm not crazy about that. Well, the nice thing about the buckle is, and, and I'm not saying it's better or worse, I'm just saying something you can do with a buckle, is when you put it on, you can silence it really easy by holding these ears and letting them expand quietly. Okay, so that's, you know, take it for what it's worth. It's just something you can do with it. Is it better? Is it worse? I'm not saying it's either. Uh, I like the clasp system that both the Arctrix and Tethers have. The buckle isn't bad because you can, like I said, silence it completely if you decide to put it on near a bedding area or 25, 30, 40 yards in a thicket from a suspected buck's bed. You can make that super quiet where the other one will pop and click a little bit. Um, if you're worried about it, just put it on before you get to the tree. Not that big a deal, right? Um, so those are the two main differences. The uh, I've had a couple people already ask me, well, it, does it have less of a stretchy band that goes around your leg than tethers? Because that was one of the, the drawbacks and people have hit me up already and said, eh, I, I love their knee pad, but it's stretchy, right? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. It's the exact same. When I say these knee pads are almost the exact same, they are almost the exact same. Uh, the difference being the rubber on top and the buckle versus the clasp. Literally, they're the exact same thickness, the exact same size, the exact same shape. The difference is, the two things I mentioned, and this one is almost half the price of that one. So, uh, that's it in a nutshell, guys. I don't wanna drag this out and belabor this point. It, here's a great, if you're, if you're on a good quality knee pad, but you know, it's, it, it's ridiculous for you to spend $70 on a knee, knee pad, and I get it, totally get it. $35, $36, whatever it is. Again, we'll put the prices down here. Uh, we'll have a link in the description for all these. And uh, anyway, God bless you. Good hunting out there. And uh, hey, if uh, here's one other thing too. If you like any of the apparel that we see, you want to look more, for more content, if you want to see some of the stories I've written for feature magazines like Peterson's Bow Hunting and things like that, uh, hey, I created a website called stagsinthewild.com. You can go buy this shirt. You can buy that hat. Actually, I need to put that on the website yet. But uh, you can go there. Just look around to your heart's content. Hope that'll help you because I've actually had guys ask me, where can I get your shirts and stuff like that at? Uh, it's at stagsinthewild.com. We'll see you next time, guys.